$40,000 worth of bikes? Let me explain how I got to this point. If we look back to May 2021, I had the Vitas Nucleus, I had the Vitas Mythic, and then I had a, the Schwinn Axum, which I've sold all three of those bikes. It was pretty difficult starting this channel from nothing and pouring all of my own money into all of these builds. But fast forward to today, how did I end up with nine bikes? First up, it's a bike that hasn't really been on the channel that much, but it's not going anywhere. It's my Polygon Extrata 6. Well, so this is my wife's bike, actually. That's why it's not going anywhere. I don't really ride it that much. And I think I've done two videos with this bike, first being the review video, and the second being, well, I did a full on parts bin upgrade and made this bike completely decked out. But yeah, this bike, with everything, I, you know, I got this bike to review it. So I didn't spend everything, spend a whole bunch of money on this bike. In fact, a lot of it was just leftover parts from other builds. But I think if you counted everything retail, this bike came out to $3,600. And the total weight of this bike, it's super light. It's only 28 pounds. And next up is the Commonsol Meta HT. And this is a hardcore hardtail that I built up a few months back that didn't quite work out. Now, don't get me wrong. I really like this bike and how it rode and everything. And in fact, I set one of my fastest times on that segment hook to face that I got a KOM on. I set one of the fastest times in its stock form like, like it is actually single speed. And uh, the bike rode really well, and I really like the 2.8 inch tires. I like the 27.5, but the problem was it just hurt my ankles. Now, it's something I heard from the Saga Squad that they, they said that the frame was too stiff. And I was like, ah, I'm, I'm tough. I can handle a stiff frame. But then after riding it, I was just chilling on the couch. And then I was like, man, why does my ankle like ache really bad? And then it kind of occurred to me, it's because of this. So yeah, a few weeks ago, I actually fired up the live stream and converted this bike back to stock in hopes of selling it. Because, I mean, if the bike hurts me and I'm not gonna ride it, there's no point in keeping it, right? So if you miss a live stream, no worries. I'm gonna be doing some more live streams and, and you'll see why I actually have a bike. Maybe you can actually see it in the shot right there. That uh, definitely needs some love. You'll see that in a little bit though. But yeah, this bike is on the chopping block. I hope to get maybe, I've spent $800 on this bike you know, a single speed when I got it, but I actually added the drivetrain off of the Ragley. And uh, I think I'm gonna list it for maybe like a thousand bucks, but I'm only gonna sell it locally. I have no desire to pack up and ship this bike. So the common saw Meta HT not really working out. I'm not mad about it. I mean, I'll just end up selling it. I'm not gonna, you know, lose a bunch of money on it, but that kind of paved the way for my next bike. And it restored my love for hardtails. And I think you guys, the Saga Squad are pretty pumped on hardtails too. But that led me to this bike right here. My Ragley Big L 2.0 that I just have $4,500 worth of upgrades on. And it is filthy right now. So hold on, let's get this cleaned up. So the reason why my bike is so dirty is because I just did the back 40 in the town over Bella Vista. 24 miles, 2,500 feet of elevation. My longest ride in a while. But luckily I had Element with me, this video's sponsor. Element is an electrolyte pack that has everything you need and nothing that you don't. If you ever accidentally tasted sweat, it's pretty gross, partly because it's so salty. Well, when you sweat, it's not just water you're losing, it's salt too. That's because salt is one of the most important electrolytes for your body and muscles. Each pack has 1,000 milligrams of sodium, 200 milligrams of potassium, and 60 milligrams of magnesium. I love the watermelon salt flavor. It's my absolute favorite because it tastes great, but it makes me feel amazing. I don't get dehydrated anymore. I recommend the 120 pack because it makes each serving $1.10, making it pretty much the best deal electrolyte on the market. And if you click my link in the description, drinkelement.com slash Evan, you can get a free sample pack. That's eight single serving packets free with any order. But this deal is only available through my link, drinkelement.com slash Evan. But with that, man, this bike is in pretty rough condition. It's like I settled in all the bearings or something and <laughs> this bike already needs a tune up. And I really like this bike. It's an aggressive hardtail and I really love all the upgrades that I've done to it. But notice that I didn't say that I love this bike. Now the Ragley is a, has a 440 reach, 140 millimeter uh, fork, aggressive hardtail, but it was weird. On that ride, whenever I stood up all the way, the bike just felt kind of weird. I don't know if it needs more stack height. I don't know if I need a longer stem. So I'm not quite sure, 
but I have big plans to basically try out every single hardtail imaginable that's you know highly recommended. And uh, I'm already in talks with getting another hardtail, so stay tuned for that. So yeah, like I said, $4,500 of upgrades on this bike that was originally $940, but here's where it gets a little interesting. And I'm, I'm making this video because it was highly requested. A lot of people want an update on all my bikes. And I think that's partially because they're a little concerned for me, right? $30,000 worth of bikes. But here's the thing. I don't even own some of these bikes. And then since you guys have been blowing up my videos so much, I'm getting companies starting to take notice in the channel and actually contributing to some of these builds, which is super nice because then I can make even more builds and not have to be burning a hole in my wallet all the time. And take these bird wheels, for example, on the Ragley. Remember that four different companies contributed to making this happen. So I really only paid for the tires and the cassette, but I had already been using the cassette from last year. So here's what I'll do. I'm gonna put a running total on the screen here, maybe here. Each time I mention what I've actually spent, I'll change the price over. And it'd actually be really cool for me to see how much I spent on this nine bike lineup. But did you see the addition that I added to this bike? So I didn't actually buy this Fox transfer dropper and it's definitely not one of my favorites because it's really sticky sometimes, meaning that it won't come up when you want it to. But yeah, I knew for that big old huge ride, like 25 miles, 2,500 feet of elevation, I knew I needed a dropper. So I borrowed this from another bike. I love, you know, putting together bikes and making them purpose built for even one ride and then just, you know, throwing them back on. Um, and that's kind of what I did with the Polygon. Like I mentioned, I borrowed the Nuke Proof Horizon. I borrowed the fork off the Orbea. I just love wrenching on bikes. And let me know what you think. Do you, uh, do you guys ever, you know, change up your bike just for one specific ride? All right, we're done with the hardtails and now onto the full suspensions. And this bike was probably one of my favorite trail bikes that I've ever ridden to date. And this bike retailed for $4,500 brand new, but is now the older model and has now been discontinued. And it is the Alchemy. Alchemy Arctos 135, and this bike was fun. I actually had it set up as an enduro bike and uh, did a whole video on that, but I need to, uh, you, can, you see this, I got the kids ride shotgun, and this is how I'm trying to make my kids uh, get used to a bike, maybe pop some wheelies every once in a while, you know, make sure they have a helmet on. I hope Alchemy doesn't mind that I did that, and I don't think the kids ride shotgun will damage anything on the bike, but let me know if you've had any experience with these things but this will be the last time that this bike is seen on the channel. Well, I think I might make a short about it pretty soon because, well, it's a review bike. I didn't actually spend $4,500 on this bike, so I have to send it back. And the next bike, I might like even more, and you'll see why. So the Arctos 135 was my favorite show bike of all time, but this bike I have in my hands right here could actually improve upon that. And uh, this bike, I haven't even shown it on the channel just yet, aside from the last live stream, and I haven't even ridden it yet. It's the all new Alchemy Arctos 140. So last month, I'll be honest, I got a bit overwhelmed. I had three companies send me a bike pretty much all at the same time, and this is one of them. So this is the Arctos 140, and somehow their legendary suspension designer, David Earl, he figured out how to squeeze out another five millimeters more travel on this bike. And I'm really curious to see if I'll notice the difference with that. But man, this guy, David Earl, he's such a genius. He designed Santa Cruz VPP suspension, and then he go into Yeti and had their switch uh, linkage suspension. And it was crazy. They had all sorts of lawsuits with each other. And then David went to Alchemy and brought his patented design, but refined it, the sign suspension. And I really think that's what made the difference making this my favorite trail bike. And you can absolutely feel it on the uphills. You're in the first part of the S curve, and there's no pedal bob, and it's just super comfortable to pedal. But then on the downhills, you get into that mid stroke and you can just let this bike rip. But one weird thing is once, if, if you're going too slow on the downhill, I feel like you're in the beginning part of the S curve and it just doesn't feel that great. But to remedy that, you just gotta take a pedal and just let her rip. So this bike is definitely one of my favorites. They sent me the highest spec version that runs for 7,000 with the X01 group set, one of my favorites. And then it has uh, you know carbon frame, i9 wheels, and then Fox factory suspension comes on all the models. And with this one, it has a Float X. And I like this Float X. It's way easier to set up compared to the Fox Float X2. And I'll talk more about that in a minute, but I am super curious. Am I gonna notice five millimeters more travel in the rear? I don't know, let me know what you think. So this next bike, it's in a pretty sad state because I stripped off all the parts because I lost interest in it. 
And if you join me this Sunday on the live stream, I'll be getting it ready to be sold and you can help me decide how much I list it for. It's a Kenyan Spectral 125. Overall, this bike was pretty fun and I put a lot of miles on this bike, seeing how I did the Ride All Bentonville series and I had the suspension so dialed in, it was just so perfect, um, but it always felt really tanky. And it should have really felt like a snappy trail bike, but this frame is pretty dang heavy. And the craftsmanship on the frame was pretty subpar, I'd say. I mean, I love the paint job and everything, but there was slag in the bottom bracket th thread, slag in the uh, seat tube, and that led to my dropper post getting all chewed up from installing it in there. So I was pretty bummed on that. But at the time when I bought this bike with my own money, I, I probably should have got the carbon version because that would have been a lot more snappy, a lot more lightweight, but I was pretty limited on money at the time because moving the Bentonville costs a lot. So the whole thing with short travel trail bikes is they're pretty snappy, they're really fun, and they make the local trails spicy again. But the thing is, so do hardtails. So that's why I'm on a hardtail kick now. Okay, onto the final three bikes, and all of them are my enduro bikes. It's funny, I went from being hesitant to even getting an enduro bike, to now I have three enduro bikes. Well, actually four if you count the Arctos, which is still in the enduro configuration. But the first is the Orbea, and it's the most recent one to the channel. So I'll make this quick because I just made a video about this bike, but this bike was part of the Pros Closet sponsorship, and they gave me a budget for the bike. I got to pick this one, and that was more of a dedicated review on the Pros Closet, and then they're gonna sponsor two more videos this summer, and in the fall, I get to sell this bike back to them with their buyback program and kind of make a video about that. Overall, I've had a blast riding this bike, and it's like an enduro bike disguised as a trail bike because it's so dang light. But pretty soon here, I'm gonna put on some enduro casing tires and take it to a proper bike park to test it, but I'm not really sure if I'll make a video on that. All right, the next enduro bike is another bike on the chopping block. So far to be sold, we got the Common Cell Hardtail, then the Canyon is gonna be sold, and the next one to be sold is the Polygon Colossus. So if you can remember, I was sent this Polygon to review it, but when I made the review video, I wasn't too sure if the bike was mine to keep. So afterwards, I chatted with bikes online and they agreed to let me keep this bike. Well, right after that, I was sent the Orbea by the Pros Closet. So I had to make some tough decisions on which bike to keep. And let's not even forget, I have one more bike that I haven't mentioned yet that hasn't been seen on the channel for seven months. But don't get me wrong, this Colossus is a fun bike. It's pretty tanky in a good way. It makes it like a perfect park bike, but with a few upgrades, this can be made into a race ready machine. And I'm kind of sad to see this one go because this bike hands down is the best turning bike that I've ever been on. And it just rips the corners. And right now they're selling it for $400 off and I'll have a link in the description for that. And that makes it probably one of the best value enduro bikes that you can get. So it's pretty funny. This bike is the third bike that I've used with the Fox Flow X2. And the first time I used a Fox Flow X2, I didn't like it. And I even said it in the video, it was on the Arctos. And since then I put so many hours on the same shock and I was at Howler and I was still having some issues. I was having a rough rear end my calves were getting tired from it. So all I did was take one, one click of rebound faster and this shock was absolutely dialed in. So before I sell this bike, I should like write down the settings or something and maybe that'll transfer to the other bikes. That's pretty funny how that works. But that brings us to the final bike, which will be making a return to the channel. And it's my favorite bike of all time. And it's the only bike that I've never upgraded right away. And it's strange because I've had it for seven months and it still is, remains the same, but it's my common saw Meta SX. So now that I've been on several enduro bikes, I'm actually pretty excited to return to this bike because I feel like I've learned a lot about enduro bikes over the last couple months. And I wanna throw some upgrades at this bike to see if I can maximize the feel of this bike. And uh, it's not exactly in the best rideable condition right now, but no worries. I have a whole bunch of upgrades sitting right over there, including the highly requested piggyback shock. So as you can see, I didn't actually spend $40,000 on this bike lineup, but who even knows how much money I've spent on spare parts, tools, and riding gear? But if you're new to mountain biking, don't let this deter you. You can easily get started riding for less than a thousand bucks. And you know, I'm really happy with where this channel is at and thanks to everybody for the massive support. And let me know if I should crank this bike collection up to a hundred thousand. Just kidding, or am I? See you Sunday.